Welcome to module number two, managing your emotions. So I'll tell you how important managing your emotions are, when, especially when it comes to your career. Okay. So we all face some high pressure situations at some point, not always, but some point, right? Um, but but the thing is, like, it's all about how you look at it and how you deal with it. And that makes all the difference. And I'll tell you why I have to put this as a module is simply because most people just get carried away with their emotions. The moment you start feeling it, they, you get high and then you just get yourself lost in that. Have you seen people or probably even you might be one of them where somebody, you know, if someone cracks a joke, even if it's like funny, you just you just laugh and you just exaggerate. You just go on, get high on your laugh and you become so happy and you just lost your entire thing. Like there is no awareness at all, right? But at the same time, also, that's on one side. On another side, it's like sometimes when you get an escalation email or when you feel or when you get a feedback, right? You just get high on your emotions. There's so much of, you know, when you when you get a feedback from your customer or from your boss you know when you get an escalation you just get yourself lost in that like oh my god like i don't feel good probably i'm not good i'm not good enough at all i'm very very bad i'm pathetic i am why are you you getting what i'm saying like it's it's so easy for us to get carried away and get lost in these emotions but the only thing is like i want i'm going to give you like few things as to how you can take control of your emotions and you start thinking with your brain and not with your heart. Okay. So by taking control of, of your emotions, you are going to have a massive advantage when it comes to decision making, action, thinking uh, with, with clarity and so on and so forth. Okay. I'm going to give you a few hacks. I have like two or three hacks for you to give but before you get into it i want you to understand a few things okay so now you know how important your emotions are and how important you know controlling your emotions are especially when it comes to your career in your workplace okay now how to identify second one is how do you identify your emotions the way you identify your emotions is very simple but before you identify there is something called as an awareness only when you are aware of your feeling then you will understand or then you will identify your emotion so let me just give you examples just one simple example but in, put it in two ways and just see how you're feeling so you are on a typical day you are sitting and working in your office okay and you get an email from the customer your customer okay or from your manager so that email says there's a feedback because there was an escalation but there was something that happened and somebody didn't have a good experience because of what you did and you are having heart palpitations right what happens the moment you read an email which is not good and it affects your reputation what happens your throat goes dry your heart beats more faster because it's an escalation. It is not a good one. It's a feedback. You have to work on So what happens is the threat. You, your body looks at that email as a threat. Okay. So when you're reading that email, the reaction that is happening in your body, okay, your physiology, your mental, your physical, everything changes. Okay. That's one side of it. Second one, email from the same person, your boss, saying that, you did an awesome job and comparing to other team members you are leading in that particular i don't know whatever okay what happens when you read it won't you feel good you're feeling good sometimes even you will smile and it's not just about that particular event of you reading that email or you're feeling that feel but also the events followed by after that whatever the things that you're doing you will start feeling you will start doing things with so much of happiness so much of joy because you're just happy you just want to walk around you feel happy and you want to smile and you know you start giving out that thing so this is these are these both are emotions first email you kind of felt sad you kind of felt um scared 
fear and whatnot. Second email, so much of happiness, so much of joy. You want to spread out that happiness and whatnot, right? So how do you how do you identify these emotions are? Emotions on a grander scale of human consciousness, there are levels of emotions, okay? But I don't want to go into depth of that. Let me just break it down for you very, very simple. What makes you feel good are good emotions, okay? What makes you feel bad are bad emotions. Anxiety, guilt, regret, anger, um, fear, uh, these are some of the bad emotions, okay? And happiness, joy, fulfilled, optimism, I don't know, uh, courage, all these things are good emotions, okay? Neutrality, neutrality will, will come in neutral, as the name says, but, but you get the point. So the moment you feel, feel is the key word, the moment you feel about these feelings, you get this feeling, the feel is the key word. You need to identify, okay, this is a bad emotion. The moment you identify it, then you need to use these tricks that I'm going to tell you. So when you use these tricks, you will not lose it. Have you seen people fighting? Fighting at work? Like not physical, I mean, I don't know, maybe even physical fight. Like literally people are fighting at work, right? Argument, shouting. It's a cheap behavior. Nobody likes it, right? So those things happen because of emotions, bad emotions. People get carried away and there is no emotional control and they just lose it, right? So I'm going to give you three hacks, very, very powerful. And if you're going to use it, I'll tell you the way you behave at your workspace, even in your life, it's going to be completely different, okay? So please take notes on this because it's very, very powerful, okay? The first one is awareness and the mindfulness. So you need to, first of all, you need to catch yourself saying, this is a bad emotion. So pay attention to all the physical sensation that's happening. What, what are you feeling? Your heartbeat goes faster, you know, your throat goes dry, uh, you're not able to think properly, you know? So you need to catch yourself. You need to bring that awareness right now. Okay, today, right now, what is it? Thursday, three o'clock, I'm here. Today, I'm here. I'm at office. I'm wearing these clothes. I'm, I've got my hands. I've got my legs. I know it's a very counterintuitive uh, thinking, but the moment you start becoming aware, all right, then you will not lose yourself on emotions. So the moment you catch yourself, you're having this emotion, what you got to do is you got to close your eyes and take a deep breath. Like I want you to really take a deep breath. It's very hard to do this, especially when you catch yourself under pressure or when you, when you have these emotions, you get so high and you lose yourself. So what I want you to do is this is something that you will have to keep practicing it over and over again. Okay. So the moment you catch yourself, close your eyes, take a deep breath, hold it for a second and then release. When you're releasing, when you are releasing, please, please stick with me. When you're re releasing, I want you to forget about everything. Easier said than done, but I want you to forget about everything and put your attention. Of course, you're going to close your eyes, right? So put your attention from your head. Like you've taken a deep breath. Okay. Hold it for a second. And then when you're releasing, you need to focus your attention from your hair, from your forehead all the way you got to go down slow and steady when you exhale your your attention your focus should be from here goes all the way to your hands to your chest to your stomach to your abdomen to your legs to your knees and then all the way to your toes just do this if you just do this if you just do this half of your emotions will just subside just like that and it's so powerful. See, first time if you do it, sometimes you might not feel it because you've never done this and your body doesn't know what you're doing, right? When you keep practicing this over and over again, and then you will see how powerful this is. This is one of the best way for you to control your emotion, identify your emotion and subside it. Okay. Don't do this when you're happy. <laughs> you don't want to do this when you're happy. Okay. When you're happy, when you're feeling joyful, why would you subside? You want to spread that out, right? So don't do this. I mean, only when you are in negative emotion, when only when you are high on your negative emotions, then you've got to do this. Okay. And the moment you do this, and then you will see how powerful this is. Like half of your, not half, I mean, 70% or eight, say even 80% of your emotions is just, just subside. You are in full control of it. 
Okay, this is so powerful. That's the first exercise. Exercise number two, cognitive reframing. Okay, so let's say that you got you get an email saying you lost your job. So I'll tell you what happens to most people. When I say most people, I'm talking about 97, 98 percent of the people. They just lose it. They just lose it. You're so scared, right? You don't know what to do. Your throat is getting dry. You get lost in some some thoughts. And that keeps over and over again. It keeps you going on and on and on. And you just, you know, stuck in some limbo. Cognitive reframing is nothing but changing your thought pattern. Patterns that give you more power, you know, patterns that gives you more courage that is gravitated towards taking action. Are you getting the point? Let me give you an example. I know that was a mouthful of words, but let me let me explain you with example. Okay. You, you have lost your job. So instead of getting stuck in, in that, okay, I've lost my job. In, instead of getting stuck in that particular bucket of thoughts, you have to literally direct all of your emotions and thinking towards what can I do to get the job, get a job in the next two weeks. Oh, two weeks is a, such a short period. The moment if somebody comes and says, you know what, two weeks is such a short period, you'll be like, okay, two weeks is a very short period, actually. So let me just do one thing. Let me see what I can do to get a job in the next 30 days. Even if somebody else is not coming and telling you, this is your own thought, your own thought saying that I can't get a job in the next two weeks, right? The moment if you say you can't, you can't. Henry Ford has said that the one who says, he who says who can and he who says who can't are probably right. So if you think you can, then you can. If you think you can't, most definitely you can't. All right. So the moment you say, I've lost my job, the moment you put your focus on I've lost my job, then you are stuck there. Instead, what can you do? If you can direct all of your thinking, I'm talking about 100% of your thinking and your emotions into what can I do to get a job in the next two weeks? You can apply this in anywhere, okay? You can apply this like, let's say you are approaching a sales target. Sales target is 100 per month. And if you're not able to achieve the 100, right? What you should do is not about how you can achieve 100 in 30 days. That is the rule that the company has set. Correct. So instead, start thinking like, what can I achieve? What can I do to achieve 150 sales in two weeks? You're going to be an animal, my friend. You're going to be an animal, an absolute beast when you just shift your thinking. And that's how powerful this is. And that is how powerful this is. This is called as a cognitive reframing. If somebody is coming and setting a substandard, most people will follow that. But if you want to break through, you need to start thinking differently. And these reframing techniques will actually give you so much of power and courage. And your total actions will start changing. Very, very powerful. Number two. Number three, emotional regulation. So we spoke about controlling your emotions a little bit on the previous technique. But right now, we're going to take an absolute control over it. How do you do that? So the moment you catch yourself in some sort of negative emotions, I want you to start writing down everything that you're feeling. Write down everything that you're feeling. The moment you catch yourself and write, the moment you start writing down, I'm not talking about emails, I'm not talking about notepad in your laptop, or I'm not talking about your phone and taking notes and noting it down. No, I'm not talking about any of this. I'm talking about literally taking your pen and a notepad and writing things down. When you do this, my friend, I'm telling you, you are going to have so much of clarity. People don't write. Okay? Don't believe me. I'll give you an example. I'll prove it to you in an example. Okay? 2 plus 2 equals to what? Got the answer? Okay. Now, 32 plus 564 into 28. What is it? Pretty hard, right? So if you can put this in a paper, can you do this? Of course, it's going to take some time. But can you do this? The answer is yes. That's it. That's exactly what I'm saying. So every time when you catch yourself, when you've been thinking about some sort of problem, when you've been thinking about when you feel sad, when you have that fear, uh, scared, or any of this, 
the first thing that I want you to do is, you know, of course, do the mindfulness and awareness technique. And the next thing is put it down on the paper, write it down, write down about whatever you're thinking. The moment you start writing down, it'll it'll give you so much of clarity that you will start thinking of things from so it's such a it's such a profound experience. You will get so much of clarity. And this is how this is how you can take the best control of your emotions. I hope you found this video valuable. I'll see you on the next module. Bye-bye.